If you find a Bible in the seat in front of you, and this includes everyone this morning, would you please take that in your hand? If there's a Bible in front of you, and would you turn, we're going to get to this in just a moment, and in fact, if I forget, booth people, when we get to this in about five minutes, I'll need the lights turned up so they can follow along. But Lamentations 3, Lamentations, is that in the Bible? That's just a few chapters, and it's not a very happy book to read, except for what we're going to be reading this morning. Lamentations is someone who's weeping, lamenting over, over things going on in their life. That's found on page 1250. 1250. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but I would like those Bibles on your laps uh, by the time we get there. Lamentations 3. <clears throat> I'm wondering this morning... How many languages we have here that we actually can speak? I'm going to start with the, the most difficult one and, and go up to the easiest one, all right? English. And I don't have to uh, test us on this because I've greeted some of you this morning and I heard the English language come. Let's, let's see what else we have here this morning. Let's go next to something dear to some of our traditions. Dutch. Dutch speakers, raise your hand. Say something in Dutch. Say Happy New Year in Dutch if you can, someone. Yeah. Okay. Happy New Year, Dutch. So let's go to German. Anybody got a little German? You got something, Joe, for us in German? Anything. Yeah. Oh, well, you know there's something else you know, too, that's going to really floor a lot of us this morning, right? There's another language. What's that that you just learned, that you're learning? Yeah, give me something of that too, please. Yeah, isn't that something? Now, God gets all this, right? God created all these languages. What else do we have? Spanish. Who's got a little Spanish? Something, anybody? Como esta? I got that one. Mi casa, su casa. I had two years of Spanish at college. My kids are both fluent in Spanish. They're way ahead of me. Let's see, what else do we have? No Latin speakers. Well, that's kind of a dead language, sorry, but it's still an important language. There must be something else yet. French, oui, oui, somebody? Who knows French? Yeah, oui, oui, I got that part down. Any other languages here this morning? No Scottish? Oh, wait a second, someone's raising their hand. Where, what? What do we have? Just show, I, I can't see your hands. Just tell me what language you know. Yeah. And say something in that. Uh, uh, I'm, can't, oh, can't oh, yeah, okay. Isn't it amazing? Uh, all these languages that we have. No Scottish people here this morning? No Scottish language? Oh, I'm sure there's something you know in Scottish. Do you not? How about this? Have you, have, have you ever seen this? Odd lang syne. I think that's how it's pronounced. That's Scottish. Did you know that? But I'm sure a lot of us here this morning have is aware of this phrase, are we not? Do we know what it means? Maybe you sang it, maybe you heard it over the end of the year, beginning of the New Year celebrations. Right? It's that familiar Scottish tune and the words that say, make sure I get it correct, should old acquaintance be forgot and now be brought to mind. Right? Anybody sing that over the, over the old year? Old acquaintance be forgot and now be brought to mind. How about if those words were changed just a little bit? Should, should old adverse circumstances be forgot and now be brought to mind? Should the bad, heartbreaking, not so good days of the past be brought to mind? Or should we just leave them as those things forgotten? I want to look ahead at 2018 with you this morning on the first Sunday of the new year, but before we look ahead, we've got to take a moment to look back. It's always good to, to kind of review our near past before we move ahead. And because what we find as we turn into the book of Lamentations, that's exactly what Jeremiah was doing. Lamentations, Jeremiah called the weeping prophet because he's writing these words that probably in tears the whole way through. Uh, Jeremiah 
looks back, and, and with your Bible in hand now, and with the lights turned up just a little, I'm going to kind of go through it. I want you to hear these words, verses 1 through 17. I'm just going to say these words as we come across them and just see how many words he uses to describe what he's feeling. All right? Begin with verse 1. I've seen affliction, the rod of God's wrath. He's driven me to be in darkness, not in light. He's turned his hand against me. Verse 4, his skin and my flesh grow old and my broken bones. Besieged, surrounded, bitterness, hardship. Dwelling in darkness like those as if those who were dead. Verse 7, he has walled me in and I cannot escape and weighed me down with chains. I cry out to him, but he doesn't hear my prayer. He's barred my way with blocks of stone and has made my paths crooked. Like a bear lying in wait, like a lion in hiding, he dragged me from the path and mangled me and left me without help. And how about this? How, how true is this of this for some of us? He dragged me up. He, he drew his bow and made me the target of his arrows. Ever felt like that? That you were the target of God's arrows? He pierced my heart with arrows from his quiver. I became a laughing stock that people mocked me. Filled with bitter herbs, given me gall to drink. Broken my teeth with gravel, trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. My splendor is gone and everything that I ever hoped for. What Jeremiah is talking about are these one of the most tragic eras in Israel's history. It was for them, and they went through a lot of hard times, if you read and understand Old Testament Jewish history. They had a lot of bad days. But Jeremiah now is coming out and saying, these are the worst days ever of God's people Israel. We're talking about the Babylonian captivity that he has in mind. Devastation and slaughter of kings and princes and elders and priests and prophets and people. When, when the Babylonians came in, first they put siege on, on, on Jerusalem, which means no food was going in and out. And when they finally went, were let in and broke in through the walls, they just slaughtered men, women, and children. Slaughtered them. No sanctity of life. Starving mothers are reduced to cannibalism. You read through the book of Lamentations and you will read, if you can... Just try to understand this. Moms were eating their children. They were starving. And they ate the very flesh of their children. Judah's people were dragged into exile for some 70 years that would be coming. Barry mentioned about that last week. Some said, oh no, just for two. No, it would be 70. And then they were, to elaborate, ceremony and worship rituals came to an end. It just, the, the, what they could do with their freedom was now going to be taken away from them. We're talking here about devastating, devastating circumstances. And this, of course, all was as a result of their sin. They, they turned their backs on God. And so God, in a sense, if you can understand this, he turned his back on them. Not completely, but he said, you want to do these things? Then here are the consequences for your sin. We get that, don't we? When we sin, there are consequences. He says, I, I got to look back before I look ahead. And he said, at the moment, as I look back, things were really bad. And, and I wonder, as we look back at 2017, it's not that long ago, but I just want you to, to bring to mind this morning, uh, how was it? How was 2017? Would you consider 2017 to be one of your banner years? It was like really good. Probably the best year ever. Or maybe it wasn't that good. And maybe it was your worst year. And, and maybe a year that you would not wish upon anyone what you went through. And maybe it's a year that uh, you just would rather forget should old adverse circumstances be forgotten now be brought to mind. Maybe you'd rather forget all about it because it was the worst year for your marriage. And maybe in some cases your marriage ended. And, and you're still going through the, the pain 
an agony of what divorce does to a marriage. It could be a broken relationship with a family member, people you work with, a neighbor, someone you haven't talked to now for years, and it's just, it just uh, as a disease in your soul, it's tearing you to pieces. It could have been a matter of dreams or ambitions you had, whether you just got out of school or going through life, of what you hoped to accomplish in 2017, and your year did not turn out at all as you planned, and even your dreams were shattered, just ripped away from you. It could have been a year, as it has been for some of us here this morning, where you had just not health difficulties, but they were on the extreme end. And you were hoping they were going to get better as the year went on, but then not only did it get better, they got worse. And you silence yourself before God because you're just tired of crying out to him. It, it could be a matter of financial difficulty or, or you lost someone who you loved dearly by means of death. It may have been a job or the like. What was it? What was it in 2017 that as you look back and you'd rather forget about, what was it that brought you into the pits of despair and that you could write and use these words that Jeremiah is using, all of these adjective, descriptive words? You can hear his pain. You can hear his sorrow. And maybe you feel just like a target as Jeremiah talks about the arrows of God. God, why do you continue to shoot arrows at me? I can handle one, maybe two, but it sure looks like I'm your target the whole year, and things just seem to get worse instead of better. Don't you think it's somebody else's turn to step in and get an arrow or two? How come it appears that I'm having all of your arrows that God allows us? How come they're all being shot at me? You see, some of us here this morning can know exactly what Jeremiah is feeling like. And as with Jeremiah, your tears flowed endlessly at times, so much so that your tear ducts were just dried up. There was nothing, nothing more that could come out of you. Jeremiah was going through the worst time of his life as he saw Israel rejected in a sense here by God because of their own choice that they chose to sin instead. And it was bad. It was bad. And yet, as bad as it was, Jeremiah remembers something. This is just really amazing, really is the word, because how could, this is what faith does, you see. He begins to remember something. that, As bad as his days were, and even at present what they were, he says, I got a testimony. And he says, listen to my testimony, verses 19 through 21. He says, I remember my affliction and my wandering, and I remember their bitterness and the gall. But he says, you know what? I remember them well, and my soul is downcast, and yet this I call to mind. And therefore, I have hope. Great is the Lord's love. His compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. He says, you see, no matter, no matter how bad my life was and is, because of the faith that God has given me, I understand that God never failed me through every one of these days. God never left me alone. He never hung me out to dry without giving me what I needed to get through each day. Verse 22 is this, this wonderful, we don't really have a word in our English, we have a lot of words for love in our English, well, really one word for love, and it's used in all kinds of ways, like, like I love my wife, but I also love pizza. Like, really? Is that the same kind of love? We have lots of words. I'm, the, the Greek, uh, Old Testament, there were many words for love, and the, the main one in the Old Testament was hesed. And this was this kind of, this love that, that was like, how do you describe it? Because it's hard to describe. There's no English equivalent. It's like, if you have a, how many of you have a dog? And sometimes guys, especially, and maybe women have dogs like this, like they're your best friend. Why? Because they're loyal. They are absolutely loyal to you. 
The word hesed is this, this, this unbelievable, absolute, un unlike any other kind, kind of loyalty that God has for the people that he loves. Jeremiah says, listen, verse 22, because of the Lord's great love, his hesed, he is, even though I am loyal, unloyal, God has been loyal to me. Verse 22, he says, his mercies never end. We use the word compassion, this, this, the same type of word use. God is so merciful. Even though we didn't deserve it and do not deserve it, Jeremiah says, listen, I don't deserve this kind of mercy. The people of Israel didn't deserve this kind of compassion. But God, being who he is, he still keeps covenant with the agreement that he made. That mercy, new drops every morning. Verse 23, faithfulness. Last week we sang, great is your faithfulness. You've been to Yellowstone? Who's been to Yellowstone? Who's seen Old Faithful? Why is it called Old Faithful? Because every, every hour, within the hour, every 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes, Old Faithful just never fails us. And you can sit there around the bench on there and you can just watch that old geyser just shoot up water. Old Faithful. Our God is a, he's old, but he's eternal. He's not that kind of old like we get old. God, he said, my God, Jeremiah says, is ever faithful. He is 100% reliable, even though I'm not. Great is his faithfulness. Verse 24, the Lord is my portion. He says, as I look back, as terrible as it was, just like great as thy faithfulness song goes, all I have needed, his hand has provided. He was my provision. Every time I think I couldn't go on one more day. Now, I want us to pause for a moment and reflect back at 2017. And, and maybe you want to forget. You just want to forget the bad times. Get them out of your memory. I'm in a new year, and I don't want to go back there. But I want you to understand something as Jeremiah understood his life. As we look back, we can say, yeah, I had some really not-so-good days. Marriage about shattered. In some cases, it was. And I'm now going through a divorce. My health, my finances, stuff with my children, with my, with my family, extended family, stuff that happened at work. I can recall those not so good days, but what God wants us to do this morning is to say, listen, but can you also recall that in each and every one of those times, as Jeremiah did, that God was there. Right there, every single time. You didn't always feel it. In fact, you may have cried out to God as Jeremiah did and saying, where are you? My prayers are going unanswered. But every single time, just when you think you were at the end of your rope, God was there. God showed up. And just as Jeremiah, may I encourage you, gave his testimony? Is that your testimony? When your life is, is just going to the pits. You know, it's so easy for us being who we are, to, to just when, when life isn't treated as fairly as we think it should, just to become complainers, 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 complainers. How bad I have it, how bad I have it, and I want to let you know how bad I have it. And when I, whether I go to work, whether I stay at home, whether I'm in my leisure, whether I'm playing shuffleboard in Florida, I'm just telling people how terrible right now my life is. And the problem with, with some of us is that's where it ends. And as Christians, that's the message we give to people. And they're wondering, well, I wonder what is it with that person, that person. I know that person is a Christian. And if that's their testimony, I want nothing to do with it because their life doesn't sound any better than mine. The difference is God wants us to know and to encourage us this morning, as with Jeremiah, do you know that you have a testimony to share when you're going through the worst of times? And are you sharing that testimony? Yes, you can tell people how, how difficult right now your days are and that the year ended not so well and it was maybe the worst year of your life. That's okay to be true to your feelings. But it doesn't stop there. You see, you have a testimony. If truly you are a Christian because if you were, you should have experienced the love of God, the mercy of God, the faithfulness of God and the provision of God in your life. That God was there for you every day single day no matter how bad it got and if you 
didn't experience that, then you've got to go back deep into your heart and to your mind because you've been blinded. Satan is blinding you to that. Say, how did I get through last year? I can tell you how you got through. Truly, if you are a Christian, the only way you get through is to know that no matter how bad it got us with Jeremiah, boy, God, I knew God's love showed up, God's mercy showed up, God's faithfulness showed up, and his provision showed up. And Pastor Jim, every single morning, as bad as it was the day before, there was unbelievable new mercies that God gave to me. Jeremiah says, that's my testimony. And is that your testimony this morning as you look back? Having looked back, then now we can look ahead to the new year to 2018 because that's important as well. And we say to each other, happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. Is there kind of a key word in there? We, we never kind of say, have an unhappy new year. I hope you have as unhappy of new year as you had last year all year. Hope God gives you more of the same. Happy New Year, we say. Why? Because we want to wish to each other that your year will be filled with happiness. For Christians, of course, the better word is what? Have a joyful year. Happiness is based on circumstances. Joy is not. That's how you differentiate the two. Joy is, is inside of us. No one can ever, ever take away your joy. They can take away your happiness, but they cannot take away your joy. Happy New Year. And, and as we look forward ahead... Do you think you're going to have a happy new year? You know, what is God going to bring in, in your path this year that may have been like or unlike last year? Do you think you're going to have a happy, joyful new year? Or maybe is this year going to be a continuation of the past and not just a continuation, but more of the same? Oh, I could just list person after person of mine. Let's just use Vanderwoods again this morning. What a way to start the new year after you've had a, a long last year. And you have a new year and you're hoping for better things to come. And, and right away, they're not only the same as last year, but it seems like things got worse. And, and now you have the weight of all these issues. As, as Joel Kuyper continues to get therapy for his healing. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to forget some names. I don't want to forget you. But there are members of our congregation who are just going through a rough patch in their life. And it's a new year and they want better days to come. Are there going to be better days or are there going to be more of the same old and not to be forgotten? What can I expect from God for 2018? And unlike what I couldn't answer a few weeks ago when I, we dealt with the whole issue of theodicy and, and, and the righteousness of God in the face of suffering, this is something I can answer. I can tell you exactly what to expect because the God who loved you, the God who showed you his mercy, the God who was faithful, the God who provided for you in your worst of times in 2017, good news, is the same God who's going to give you more of the same in 2018. You can count on it. God is going to be there for you no matter what comes. You can expect those new mercies every morning. Why? Because even though the year changes, there's something that doesn't change regarding our God. In fact, there's a song we're going to sing in just a moment that's entitled, One Thing Remains. One thing remains as I go into this new year, even though different things change. God's love never fails. He never gives up. He never runs out on me. Oh, we'll do that. We'll, we'll fail each other. We'll, we'll run away from each other. We'll turn around and go the other way when somebody might need our help because that's what we do sometimes. But not God. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. One thing remains is love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. And that being the case, I want to encourage you to do what Jeremiah did because he tells us once more in verse 25 as he looks ahead and now even though he's looking ahead to 70 years of captivity with the people of Israel, when everything he loved has been stripped away from him, he says, listen, the Lord is good to those who hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. What does that phrase go? Repeat after me. What, what do you say when I say God is good? All the time. God is good all the time. All the time God is good. 
He says, look, I, I don't have, you would think I don't have a lot to hope for as I look ahead to the next 70 years where a whole generation is going to be in captivity and we're not going to experience everything we experienced from God. Certain things are going to be taken away from us and it's our fault because of my sin. But he says, I have hope. Strength for the day and bright hope for tomorrow, we sing in that old song. I have hope that no matter what comes in these next years, as we go through this tragic time in our life of Israel, I have all the hope in the world that my God is going to be there for me because that never changes. And you know, we have that same hope as we come to the table this morning. Hope is that, that, that one Christian virtue that you, you just have to grab onto and learn, and not just learn, get it in your head and heart, but experience because surely some of us are sitting here this morning and already have experienced not so good things in 2018. Or this might be, just for some of us, the worst year that you've ever lived and we, we don't know what's coming. But because of the cross and because of the resurrection, because of what Jesus did through the cross, which, the, which was the means to give us the hope we have, and through the resurrection, which was the power to give us that hope, Peter says, listen, read this with me. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. A living hope. My friends, so many of us here this morning have that living hope. But maybe there's someone sitting here this morning who's never experienced that, and, and you don't know how you got through last year. You were just ready to just, to, just to, uh, uh, throw in the towel and walk away. I want you to know this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ, and, and if you're going through tough times in your life or whatever this year might bring, that's going to be difficult. We want to tell you more about this living hope that we have in Christ. That's what the cross, that's what this is all about this morning. Jesus says, remember. You want to remember things as Jeremiah called things to mind? We call this to mind. Jesus died and rose again. And because of that, no matter what we're going to face this year, we have a living hope. And that we'll know no matter what comes, we can get through every day, one day at a time. Because we have a God who never changes. And it's all because of the cross and the resurrection. And we cling to it. And that's why every Sunday this year we make a commitment. I'm coming to worship this God because I need to be encouraged every single week. I need to hear God speak to me about how he's going to care for me and walk with me and that I have nothing to fear of my future, near future, or what the year may bring because I have a God whose love never fails. It never gives up. And it never, ever runs out on me. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these words from Jeremiah. What a, what a different kind of literature. We're going to talk about different kinds of literature at, at the 10 o'clock at Del Ed. This is a different kind of literature, this, this, this poetic literature, and, and how we interpret the agony and pain and suffering. Jeremiah was going through a really bad time, and, and so many of us can relate to that this morning. As we look back at 2017, maybe what we've already experienced in 2018 or what may be yet to come. And there might be a fear factor involved. This morning, we surrender. This morning, we quiet ourselves before you. And we can leave as we come to the table and, and be nourished by Christ, his body and his blood. We can leave this place this morning with the absolute surety and hope, living hope, that because of his death and resurrection, I can, I can face no matter what comes this year because I have a God who loves me, who never gives up on me, who never runs away from me. And that, that Lord Jesus is what I need to get through not only one more day, but the year that comes. We praise you, God, for being a God who never changes. In Jesus' name, everyone say. Amen.